Hi, I'm Jeremy Oxendine with Electric Supply and Equipment. I want to talk with you about data used in digital transformation. This data may be real-time in nature or historical. Historical information is stored so that you can do analytics against it. But what are the types of data stores used in manufacturing data? Data typically falls into two distinct categories, time series data and relational data. Time series data is a series of data points logged and saved in time order. Examples of time series data are stock charts and daily closing values of the NASDAQ or IT tracking for a server use over time. Another example is time stamp data generated by a control logics controller, that is, temperatures, pressures, etc. Time series data is best stored in a time series historian. Now relational data is data that is collected for data points with a predefined relationship between them. So an example of relational data is a phone book. When you have a name, a last name, an address, and a phone number, and so forth, a typical query would involve listing all the contacts with a specific last name, area code, or zip code. Another example for manufacturing is a recipe management, where each recipe is made up of many related ingredients, and relational data is best stored in a relational database. So let's take each one of these in turn. Database size. One of the biggest advantages to the historian SE is the way in which it compresses the data. In other words, it brings the data in from the controller, looks at those data values, and determines whether to actually store that value or not. After all, why would you store a data point that is not changing? Relational databases do not make that distinction. They store the data whether it's changing or not. The problem with that is you're actually collecting data, storing data, consuming resources that aren't necessarily going to make a difference whenever you bring back that information to do analytics against it. Now, the historian SE is after it runs that compression and makes that determination, which you define those parameters, if it hasn't changed, why store it? By doing that, it actually makes the other advantages come into play. Database management for one. With the data store files being so small, it's much easier to manage those files as far as archiving them off. With a relational database, you can build up a lot of data and then you have to run SQL statements to actually clean that data up or to back it off of the server. The Historian SE makes it real easy from its interface to deactivate those archives and then just copy them over. So let's talk about the one perceived disadvantage of time series historians or Historian SE in this case. And that is the ability to put context around the data in which you're storing or to create relationships between data points. Historian SE solves this problem with something called Asset Framework. Let me give you an example. Say you have a pump. One of the typical values that we capture whenever we're monitoring pumps is the flow rate from that pump. However, there's additional information that may come into play that would be nice to know along with that flow rate at that given time in which that flow rate value was captured. An example would be vibration or the amp draw of the motor that's running the pump. Maybe an alarm, an event in this case, that occurred. We'd like to know when that event happened and at what flow rate it occurred at. Maybe we would like to know what piece of equipment that pump is associated with, or not only the equipment that it's associated with, what site is it on? What division within the corporation is that pump associated with? All that information is valuable. With Asset Framework, we allow you the ability to capture that alongside of the flow rate, thereby creating that context or those relationships. Another key component of the asset framework is the ability to create something called event frames. Let's say, again, going back to our pump example, you would like to know what the batch ID that you were running at the particular time that that pump was creating that flow rate. By capturing batch IDs, you're allowed to put bookends, if you will, around that data point so that you know what batch ID or what particular product you were running during those flow rates you were capturing off that pump. Or maybe another event would be an alarm. You'd like to know 
when the alarm occurred and when it went away. So you'd want to be able to put those bookends again around that data point when that alarm was present. Event frames allow you to do that. How about notifications when certain events occur? Again, asset framework will allow you to generate notifications to send out to personnel so that they can respond to those events. So let's talk about some of the typical architectures that you will see when we're implementing the story in SE. One of the simplest architectures is what we call local buffering option. And that is whenever you have the interface node and the data server all located on one instance or one OS. What that does is it all flows to collection, store and forward, and dead banning is done at that local machine and then sent to the Historian SE server. The only thing you're splitting up is the interface node and the data server is on one machine and then the Historian, which does the archiving and the asset framework, is on a different machine. Now, we can take that a step further and we can actually make those interface nodes redundant. So what happens when we do that? Basically, both interface nodes are capturing data or getting data from the controller and then is available and up and running. That one is the one that's actually communicating the data to the historian. If that interface node fails, the other one immediately picks up and takes over sending the data to the historian, thereby reducing or eliminating data loss from the plant floor. And when you're talking about digital transformation, this data will grow to become invaluable. It creates great disruptions without it. So as you progress down your digital transformation, this is something you have to think about long term. How are we ensuring that we're going to be getting the data from the plant floor? A story in SE helps address that with the redundant interface nodes. Now we can also take this a step further. Not only would we have redundant interface nodes and redundant data servers, but we also can have redundant historian data archive servers. So what's the difference? Well, with a redundant interface nodes, what we're ensuring is that you do not lose data and it's captured and it will eventually end up to where you can do analytics on it. With high availability architectures, such as having redundant historian data archive servers, we're ensuring that you always have visibility of that data. With version 8 of Historian SE, we've released a new data connector for use with Control Logics and Compact Logics controllers. The purpose of this connector is to support data rates of 1 millisecond to 750 millisecond collection time. So, very powerful addition for those high speed data collection applications. So, to summarize, Factor Talk Story in SE has premier integrations with Logix controllers. We have optimized data store with exception and compression capabilities. We can minimize data loss with redundant Factory Talk Live data interface nodes, which are included with every Historian SE server. You can contextualize your data and link it to external data sources using the asset framework. You can track important events like downtime with event frames. You can leverage pre built-in powerful calculation engine for doing analysis. You can stay informed with notification services. You can also backfill data with migration from legacy systems and access your data anytime with the Historian SE server by using the high availability configuration. I would like to thank you for taking the time to learn more about the benefits of Historian SE and how it can help you with your digital transformation. Please contact ES&E to learn more about our products that can help enable your digital transformation.